intentions. Well, Iran aims to start producing more highly enriched uranium at the country's main plant in Natanz, and it will, uh, and also claims it will build 10 new enrichment plants. Let's talk to the writer and journalist David Patrick Karakos, who's uh, here with me in the studio now. What do you make of this? What, what, what's behind the timing of this uh, announcement, do you think? Well, I think the timing is very much in line with Revolution Day in Iran this week. Certainly the boast, as I call it, to build 10 more enrichment facilities. I mean, this is simply ludicrous in terms of logistics. Iran simply can't do this. So that's a, 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 an idle claim. You, you're saying they can't do that? They can't do this. Technically, they can't. It's way beyond the infrastructure of the nuclear program in Iran at present. What is more interesting, I think, is the um, statement that they've made that they're going to enrich to 20%. Now, this is very much um, Iran raising the stakes in negotiations. What, what does that mean, technically? To 20%. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's what it would require for the uh, nuclear reactor in Tehran. Okay. Um, it's uh, for medical purposes what Iran needs this uranium for. Now, I spoke to senior Iranians at the end of last year, and they were already talking about this. Iran needs nuclear fuel for the Tehran reactor. And what Ahmadinejad said in his speech yesterday, which I think hasn't come across in a lot of Western reports, is that if the international community does not provide this fuel to Iran, Iran will go ahead and enrich. Iran is not currently in a position to enrich to 20%. It would take them a couple of months. It's not too difficult. They've got their centrifuges spinning at 3.5%. To get them spinning to 20% isn't the end of the world, but it would take a couple of months. This is very much Iran saying to the international community, give us the nuclear fuel we need or we will do it ourselves. And what, in your view, should be the response of the international community? We've already heard strong words, as we heard there, from the Americans and, and, and the, uh, the French president. Sure. And the Israelis are also very keen to, to push the matter as well. The problem is, I think, Robert Gates uh, said today that the world should stand together. And this is the problem facing the international community. Short of military action, sanctions are the only legitimate and feasible response. Now, the problem is getting a coalition of the willing on this. Iran has very skillfully exploited fissures within the international community, notably its relationship with Russia and China. Now, in order to get the Security Council to a sufficiently robust level, Russia and China are critical. Now, many saw Obama's move in the middle of last year to, um, or in September of last year, to remove the missile defense shield from Eastern Europe, very much as a quid pro quo with Russia, to get them on side for the Iranian nuclear file. Now, this has been successful. However, it is limited. There is only so much Russia will do uh, to put sanctions on Iran when it has such financial interests with the Islamic Republic on the nuclear program. The Bouchesha reactor is very much a Russian project. China as well, and I think Mr. Kushner, foreign minister of France, said exactly this. China is going to be difficult to get on board. Yeah. Chinese-American relations are not at an all-time high at the moment. Now, if the international community wishes to push sanctions, it's going to need to attack Iran's oil. That's the simple fact. 85% okay. of the Islamic Republic's revenue comes from oil. If you want to hurt Iran, you attack its oil. But this will also hurt the international community as well. Is the world, is the West ready for oil $160, $170 a barrel? I'm not so sure. Now, on the flip side, uh, there are signals coming from Saudi Arabia that they would increase oil supply to offset um, should the uh, world put an embargo on Iranian oil. Also, um, Iraq is now back to pre-invasion levels of production. So there are signs that possibly there is a willingness to go for tougher sanctions. The question very much remains, can they get them on board? Okay. David uh, Patrick Harakos, thank you very much indeed for your views. Thanks. Thank you for having me.